Good morning, whatever I will tell you. We are continuing on Masachet Brachot, and we are on Tafmem, Amud Bet, 40B, and we are six lines up from the white lines. The Limud of Amud Yomi for Chodesh Hashvan has been sponsored by Aaron and Miriam Zaguri, Le'ilu Nishmat. It did, but Miriam, that her Nishama should have an Aliyah, Amen. So we are in the middle of discussion of the bracha on the bread and saying the bracha not in a conventional way. In other words, con- conventional may- way is to say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Atah Hashem, Baruch Atah Or, so we're saying bracha achrona would be a complete benching. You open your bencher, you say, Agel Hazan Otanu, right? Hazan Etakol, and you say the brachot. That's the conventional Sidur way of doing it. How about if someone deviated from that and said the bracha not in Hebrew or not in the conventional text that Chazal have instituted? Are you Yotze? Are you not Yotze? That's something that we started. We're going to continue that. The story that Gemara brings from a shepherd. The guy called Binyamin Raya, Binyamin the shepherd, Karach Rifta, he ate a suda. So whereas until now we were speaking about Birkat HaMotzi, the Bracha Rishona, being said not in the conventional way. Now we're talking about Birkat Amazon according to most understandings. There are those who say this is referring to HaMotzi, but the conventional understanding of the Gemara is that this is talking about Birkat Amazon. At the end of his suda, instead of Opening a bencher and benching, he said, Brich Mare the High Pita. Blessed be the one that created this bread. And Amar Rav, Rav said, Yatza. Rav said, This is a good Birkat Amazon. It's a good bracha. The says, Wait a second. The Hamar Rav, Rav himself, how can Rav had said, that this person is Yotzeb. Rav himself, we know, holds Kol bracha she'en ba haskarat Hashem. Any bracha that you don't have haskarat Hashem, and a bracha, if you don't mention Hashem's name, it's nishto bracha. It's not a bracha. So says the Mara, the Amar, okay, it, we, we're going to uh, tweak this. This Binyamin, the shepherd, didn't just say brich mare de hai pita, but he said brich rahmana mare de hai pita. So he said rahmana. Rahmana in Aramaic is a kinui Hashem, is a direct reference to Hashem's name. Now, there's a bachlok at the Magda scheme, whether or not any other direct reference to Hashem would be considered good, or maybe only one of the seven names of Hashem and Rahmana is an exception to the rule. Rahmana means the Rahum, right? <laughs> means the one, the compassionate ones. So maybe it's only this reference, Rahmana, because he was considered in, in Babel as the reference to Akadosh Baruch Hu's name. But be that as it may, he said, Baruch Hashem, the master of this bread. So Tumara says, wait a second. That's, even if you want to say that's a bracha, how many bracha do we say in Birkat Amazon? Yuda, how many bracha do we say? How many of them that are Ikar? Right? The fourth one was Nitkan in Yavne later on because of Haruge Betar. They, they instituted another additional bracha because of Haruge Betar, but three of them are main. So why is it, wait a second. Even if you want to say that this is a good bracha, how many brachot is that? One. How about the other two? We need three brachot. When we, when we, when we have mezonot, what bracha do you make at the end? Me'en. Me'en shalosh. Me'en shalosh means like the three brachot that you need to say. Brikat Amazon is three. Me'en shalosh is like three, right? Because all of those three concepts that he say in Brikat Amazon are encapsulated in the text of the bracha of Men Shalosh. So you need three brachot. If it's, if it's real bread, you have, you have had like a nice kishmak suda. You have to say three brachot. What happened with that? The Mara says, yeah, 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 yeah. That's correct. Ma even Rav, 
that said Yuriotse, he didn't mean that you're done with Birkat Amazon. He meant that Yuriotse Birkat Hazan. Yuriotse from the first bracha. Now, I'm just going to open a quick parenthesis here, if I could borrow your brains, right, for a moment. There are brachot that are called brachot arukot, there are brachot ktsarot. The short brachot that you say, right? Like short bracha. Then there are longer brachot that start with baruch and end with baruch. The first bracha, Brikat Amazon, how does it start and end? And then at the end, you say, Baruch Ata Hashem Hazanet Akol. So there are those of the Mepharshim here that they say, well, 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 this is not what really Binyamin Raya, the Binyamin the shepherd, said, because this doesn't follow the pattern of a Bracha Arucha. Others say no. Even if you change, and it's a, it's a much bigger chiddush, that even if you don't follow the pattern of the bracha that Chazal instituted, you're still yotze. Right? Those who say you have to follow the pattern, they would say, this shepherd, you know what he said? He said, Right? Blessed be Hashem who created this bread. Which is, Baruch Hashem Hazan Right, so either he said that, and you need the structure of a bracha aruka, or maybe not. Now this is going to become very much handy right now because you'll, as you'll see, there are certain things that you could say in any language, and that's something that that's important again, again especially for less religious family members or balat shuva that they just started. You're talking about the bracha de'oraita, and they don't know necessarily how to read Hebrew fluently and so on. So you want to know if you could just read and say translation or say your own um, your own text. That's something important to keep in mind. So says the Gemara. The Kama Rav Nami Yatsa the bracha rishona. Rav also meant that you only yotze the first. Bracha, not all three. Man. So says Gemaram, Marka Mashmala, first wide line. Says, okay, wait a second. What are you teaching me with this? Are you teaching me Afalgav de Amara Belashon Chol? Are you going to teach me only that if you said Birkat Hamazon in Aramaic, Belashon Chol, not in Hebrew, Yuri Yotze, Shkoyach. I know that already. That's a Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Tanina, we learned this in a clear Mishnah, right? This is a, a Mishnah, it's brought in Masechet Sotah in Daflamet Bet, Masechet Shavuot as well. Ve'enu nemari bekol lashon, that there are certain texts that even though that they are the Oraita, even though that it's not a rabbinic institution, yet you could still say them in any language that you understand, right? And that's a big chidush, but the Mishnah says it. And what are they? A, Parashat Sota, right? The klalot that the Kohen has for the, for, for the woman that has been suspected for uh, infidelity and, and promiscuity, that, that is something that the, the Parashat Sota says, this is what you say. So well, does that mean that you have to say it exactly like the Chumash says it? The Mishnah says, no, Parashat Sota could be said in any language. Any language she understands, she has to understand it. The Mara says, we do Maser. We do what we do Maser. After the third and sixth year, sixth and third and sixth year are a different Maserot. So in the fourth and the seventh year, basically, after the, the, the Shnata Maser, at the, at the end of Pesach, that means Motzai Pesach, the Mincha of the last day of Pesach. That would be, you would come and, you know, the, those years, the end, it's considered the end of the year, Shnat Maser, you finish giving all of your Maser, all of the things that you kept in your storage to, you know, give, give out little by little, you finish giving all of them out, you say, okay, Bi'arti HaKodesh Minabayit, Begam Netativ Levi, right? I, I, you know, completely cleaned my house of any Kodesh. I gave it all out. 
And there's that text that you have to say, it's called Vidui Masim, right? A city called Misfatecha, Shasimitani, right? Lo achalti beoni mimenu. All of those things that you have to say at the end, it's a text that you come and say, the text that the Torah says. It's like a paragraph that the Torah says, this is what you say. So it's not something that was a, a rabbinic institution or assertion of what you're going to say. It's a text in the Torah. And yet, says the Mishnah, you could say it in any language. Hmm? So yeah, this is the third and sixth year you'll have instead of Maser Shani, you'll have Maser Ani. Different Maserot, and all of those you have to give out. You have a certain amount of time to give it out, right? And even other Maserot that you have had at the end of the three years, you want to make sure that it's twice a cycle. You kind of like, you know, clean it off and you say, fine, I've done it. It's clean. I did everything that I had to do. That's me with us. The Kriyat Shema is the third one. It's our, our very um, daily Kriyat Shema, right? Kriyat Shema, we mentioned before. Shema Bechol Lashon Shata. Shomaya. You could say Shema in any language that you hear. Of course, Shkaru Harav, Mishnah Brura, they say the Chatchila, a person should say it in Lashon HaKodesh. That's for, for sure, right? We haven't gotten there yet. We're just about getting there in Siman Savach Bed, it is, I think. That's, that's, that's something we're going to discuss, but you could, technically speaking, you could say Shema in any language. You don't know Hebrew. You, say, you open the Siddur, you say it in English. You say it in Farsi, you say it in Arabic. You can say it in any language that you understand. Says the Gemara. Utfila. Tfila is another one. You could say Tfila in any language you understand. And what we really need over here is Birkat Amazon. Birkat Amazon could be said in any language, says the Mishnah. So, are you teaching me that Birkat Amazon could be said in any language? I know it's from a Mishnah in Masechat Sota already. What do you teach? What, what do you mehadesh? What's your chidush? I know that already. Says Maram. No. Istrich. We need it because I would have thought I would have thought if I only had the Mishnah and Masechat and Masechat Shvuot, I would have thought that's only if you translate like a transliterate. You mamash are reading the translation of every word that Chazal or the Torah has instituted for you to say. But to make your own Nusach to say, ah, how beautiful is like we had the Machlok of Rabbi Meir on Rabbi Yossi, right? What was the, the thing over there? So, Kama Nae Patze, how beautiful is this bread, right? Baruch Hashem Hashem Rash, Baruch Hashem that Hashem created this. That's like fabricating a new Nusach. You may know your own text. Or, especially in the case that we just said, according to those Poskim who say, this Binyamin the shepherd did not say a bracha aruka. He didn't end the, the bracha, his bracha with a bracha. He just said, Baruch Rahmana Mare Pita. Baruch Hashem, the master of this bread. Right? He didn't end it to say, Baruch Rahmana Dezan Kola. Baruch Hashem, that is Hazana Takol. That's the end of the bracha. You changed the format of the bracha. And yet, you riotzit. That chidush you don't see in Masechet Sota. If I would only have the Mishnah in Sota in Shvot, I would say, yes, if you translate it, if you read the translation exactly the way it's written in Hebrew, then yes. But how do you know that if you change the Nusach and you tweak it your own way, you still yotze? That you know only from me. Okay? So, wait, wait. Hold your breath. Or not. It says the Gemara. Third wide line. But if you didn't say it in other languages in the way that Hebrew must have been said because it's institution of Chazal, if you didn't exactly translate it word for word, I would have thought maybe not. And that is exactly what our Gemara is teaching us. Now, are you Yotze with this? No, it says, it's a good question. It's Takinu Rabbanan only. I mean, the Chidush is by Brikad Amazon because, again, the concept of the Bracha is Midoraita, the Torah does not give you a, an exact text. 
מה שאין כאן באשמה, it says הדברים האלה. It says these words, right, these פרשיות, by פרשת סוטה, it says exactly the text, and also so, so says with וידוי מאסר. So those has to be, עמידה, again, עמידה, if you, if you kept, and we have to get to that, we haven't discussed it yet, if you change the beginning and end, it changes the whole concept. If you don't, if you keep the, the beginning and the end, given the next paragraph of the Gemara, yes, right? So says the Gemara, Gufa, we go back to this, <laughs> lest you make a mistake and think what we just said is halacha, chas v'shalom, halacha is not like Rav, halacha is like Rabbi Yochanan. What is the machlok of Rabbi Yochanan? Gufa, we had it already, we're going to have it again. Gufa, Amar Rav, Rav says, kol bracha shein bach haskarat Hashem ena bracha. Any bracha that you don't have the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu mentioned in it, it's not a bracha. So therefore, what we thought in the beginning, that this Binyamin, the shepherd said, Rich mare da harpita, blessed be the, the master of this bread, that bracha according to Rav is not a good bracha, right? But if you say, Rich rachmana mare da harpita, he mentioned Rachmana, the Kinui, the, the reference to Hashem, then it's a good bracha, right? Not too fast. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Rabbi Yochanan, whose halacha is like him, says, no, that's not sufficient. Kol bracha she'en bah malchut ena bracha. Any bracha that doesn't have the kingship of HaKadosh Baruch who mentioned in it is not a bracha. Now, Rabbi Yochanan is not disagreeing with Rav. It's not that he's suggesting that you should skip the name of Hashem and just mention the kingship. No. You must mention Hashem's name, that's for sure. But on top of that, you also have, it's not sufficient to mention only the name of Hashem. You have to also say the Malchut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So you need Baruch Atah Hashem, and you also need Rukenu Melech HaOlam, right? And without that, it's not going to be a good bracha. So according to him, Binyamin Raya, the shepherd, the way he said it, he was not Yotze, unless he said, Brich Rachmana, Malka de Alma, right? Just translating it in, in Arabic, right? Blessed be Hashem, Malka de Alma, Melech Haolam, Mare de Haipita, the master of this bread, right? That you would be Yotza, according to Rabbi Yochara. This actually has serious ramifications because you think, well, who cares about this? We say the brachot the way we have it in the Sidur. Nobody says, oh, I, I, you know, I've never seen a person like that. But Chachabadia used to always say, he said, people, most, half the people who say, they're not Yotze. Why? Or for that matter, any other bracha. Because what do you do um, when you say bracha nowadays? Especially the, the length of the bracha also has to do with the height of people. Because the taller you are, the longer your hands are. And the longer it takes for you to take the, the food to your mouth, right? And everybody knows that the time of the bracha is from the table to your mouth, somehow, right? So if you have, you're a shorter person, you're like, Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is many people, and as you know, I have to have humor before I say the serious thing, but it's as serious as anything, right? <clears throat> you say, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech. Haolam, that's a proper bracha. If you say Melech Alam, then you didn't say Melech Haolam. What's Melech Alam? Melech Alam is, a, is one word, not two words. Melech Alam has no Hebrew translation that I am aware of yet, right? It's a new language. And if that's correct, you did not say Malchut. And because we pass in like Yochanan, your bracha is worthless. This is something Chavad used to say, you know, all the time, and something to be mindful of. You say, Melech, how long? So says the Gemara. Kod bracha she'en ba malchut ena bracha. Amar Abaye, Abaye said, Kevatet the Rav Mistabra. Halacha should be like Rav, not like Rabbi Yochanan. Why? The Tanya, because we learned in the Brayta, Lo avarti mi mitzvotecha velo shachati. This is a reference back to Vidui Maser. Then you say, Lo avarti mi mitzvotecha velo shachachti. Lo avarti mi levarechecha. There's two elements mentioned in the pasuk. Lo avarti mi levarechecha. I did not transgress from blessing your name. Velo shachachti mi leaskir shimcha. And I did not forget is a reference that I didn't forget to say to mention your name on it. 
עליו. ואילו מלכות לא קטן. But it does not say מלכות in the brighter. So says Abaye, from this brighter you see, like Rav, against Rabbi Yochanan. So says the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan, Tani, Rabbi Yochanan has, has a different girsa. Rabbi Yochanan has the girsa, so therefore it's not a kasha on him, because his girsa is, Lo shachachti, that I didn't forget, I didn't forget to mention your name and your malchut on, on it. Okay, so that's the, the, the end of the previous sugya, previous kimara. And of course, as we mentioned, the Rambam, the Rif, and the Tosafot over here, the long last Tosafot, bring that the halacha is like Rabbi Yochanan, um, that you need Shem, and Malchut, not just Shem. Always goes together in 2022 because we pass it like Rabbi Yochanan. Right? If you rewind the time to the time of the Gemara, it was Machloket, the Tun Rav and Rabbi Yochanan. <laughs> According to Rav, no, it doesn't go together. The main, main thing is you mention Hashem's name. Who cares about the Malchut? Do we? So, Magen Avraham, that, that's that. So, Yotzer Ameorot, no. The two things. One is, we mentioned this in the Shkharuch um, yesterday, right? That sometimes you have a bracha smucha lechaverta, right? Whenever you have a bracha smucha lechaverta, you have brachot back to back, you could piggyback on the first bracha for the second bracha that's adjacent to it. And that could even be the brachot that are beginning and end of the same bracha. For instance, Baruch Shamar starts with Baruch Atah Hashem, right? And Baruch Tabach does not start with the bracha, right? And doesn't at the end have Melech Olam. So if I would be to ask, what happened with bracha Vishtabach? What kind of bracha is Vishtabach? Because it doesn't seem to follow the pattern of what we just mentioned, because it st starts, of course, with the Shtabach, which doesn't have any bracha in it, and ends with a bracha that doesn't have malchut in it. We say Shtabach Shimcha Lad Malkenu, right? And hmm? Shimcha is not the name of Shem. It's not a bracha, that's not a baruch, right? And at the end, when it starts, it says Baruch Ata Hashem. Right? And you have this in your Meorot as well, right? As you mentioned, the, the example you gave, you have the bracha right over here. Av Shema at the end, Baruch Atah Hashem, Havu Chiba Amo Yisrael, Ba'ava. And it starts with Avat Olam, Avtanu Hashem. So what kind of bracha is that? Well, because it's going back on the bracha smucha right before it. The bracha is Baruch Ata Hashem Elokenu Melech Haolam Yotzer Or Ure Hoshech. Right. So when you have the bracha Elokai Neshama, is the same thing, right? You say Ashe Yatzar, you finish Ashe Yatzar, and you say Elokai Neshama, and at the end you have a Baruch. So that's bracha smucha lechaverta. The Tosafot over here asks, he says, wait a second, how about the bracha that you got to daven every day, three times to daven, how do you start? Hashem, Sfatai Tzach, Vegit, Erat, Agab, Baruch, Ata, Hashem, Elokeinu, Elokei Avotenu, hey, what happened with Melech HaOlam? I thought you were asking like Rabbi Yohanan, what happened? And Tosafot says, the most fantastic answer, the says, because they say, look at Abraham, that is tenth amount of saying, Melech HaOlam, because Abraham made Hashem Melech HaOlam. Mm -hmm. So, look at Abraham is tenth amount for the Jashot of the Shabbat by the parasha of Abraham Avinu was this, that he made HaKadosh Baruch Hu Melech HaOlam. When he has um, the, the Eved, Eliezer, go find a Shiduch for Yitzchak, right? You take, a, you take a look at the the text, it makes no sense. In the beginning, it says, come, 
I will, I, I, I will make you swear, right? Hashem, the God of heaven and earth. And then he says, Hashem, that took me out of Urkastim, that took me out of Urkastim, should help you. So is it Hashem, the God of heavens, or is it heavens and the earth? Rashi right, so brings it the Chazal beautifully that now that I'm speaking to you, Eliezer, after all these years, now Avram is 137 years old, <laughs> right? By the 40 years old. And he says, at this, at, at this time, Hashem is already everyone in Melech HaOlam is the Melech of the entire world. People recognize him. But when he took me out of Ur-Kastim, when I was young and just started, he was only and okay, Hashem, nobody knew Hashem and admitted his name on earth. The ambassador of Akash Baruch was Abraham Avinu who made him known in, in earth, on earth. That's why saying, and okay, Abraham says the Tosafot here, so take a look at the Tosafot. This is a serious thing. It's not just a, it's a real halachic, halachic thing, which is beautiful and powerful and profound. But the Maaseh, he says, Abraham, is the middle, it's back in the middle of the Tosafot. Um, to, 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 to the whole world. He, he made the, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his kingship be known to all um, human, humankind. So, says the Gemara. Right? Gufa. So we, we said we said that Allah is the Mahok of Rab and Rabbi Yochanan and Allah is Rakub Khan. Zok the Mishnah. Baal Davar Shen Gidulomin Hare. So we spoke about in previous Mishnah of fruits of land, Bripriadama, fruits of, of trees, Bripriya Aetz. Now things that are not from Haetz and not from Hadama. Davar Shen Gidulomin Hare, something that doesn't grow out of the ground. Omer Shakol ni Abid Varo. He says Shakol. Examples. The Mishnah says also, Alachomes fala novlot, ve ala govai, omer shakor ni abit paro. And vinegar, and novlot, which we're going to see what it means. I'll translate based on the maskana of the Gemara. It means dried up fruits. Ve al ha govai. Govai is a kind of kosher grasshopper. You say shakor ni abit varo. Before you crunch on it, if you could tolerate it. You say shakor ni abivaro. According to the shach, if you're going to be disgusted with it, it's it's a isura bat shak, so you should not be eating it. But OU, uh, uh, OU has every year, I think still they have it, they have a Masora dinner. There are two two very interesting individuals, Ari and Ari, what them are Ari, um, that they go research the like, uh, strange minhagim of Klal Israel in different places, and they try to bring it to light, uh, support it with, with, with halachic background, and reestablish it. So, so one, one time, this is you know, 20 years ago or so, they had actually in the Masora dinner, they served um, chocolate covered grasshoppers. I love the expressions on the faces, right? And one of the very famous, back then, very famous uh, figures actually took, took a picture and eating, crunching on it. I was like, ah, oh, okay. So, if you're eating grasshoppers, you make shakonia bitvaro on them, right? Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Kol min klala en Anything that's considered a klala, a destruction, you don't say bracha on it. It's a three-way machloket rishonim, how to understand this, this piece of the Mishnah. Is it referring to all three that we mentioned, vinegar, novlot, which is dried up, destroyed fruits, um, and also grasshopper, because those two are things that went bad. Wine that goes bad is, is vinegar. Fruits that go bad, is novlot and grasshopper because it brings klala. It, it, it brings destruction to the world. How, what, how do they feed? They go on in, in, in flocks of, of tens of thousands, millions sometimes, and they, they you know, sweep clean cities sometimes that, that create famine and destruction. So therefore, that's min klala. Or is it only going on the first two because those are things that go bad, but what did the poor grasshopper do, right? That's not mean klala. Or is it only going on vinegar and grasshopper, but novlot is dried fruit. 
it's not a klala necessarily. So that's a three-way machloket in the, in the medieval authorities, uh, an explanation of the Mishnah, what exactly the expression is. But generally speaking, we understand it to be on all three of them. So says the Gemara. Anything that's that's klala, we don't say bracha on it. meaning harbe. If you had many different types in front of you, imagine you have, um, you know, ilanot. That's one of the things of, of Chag ilanot. The, the way the, the, the modern Orthodox have made made the uh, or conservative reform have made the whole thing out, out of this. Um, but but really, uh, the chokhmah is you have all types of fruits and stuff like that in front of you, and the chokhmah is you, you get the best opportunity to to give chinuch to children or adults who never had proper childhood of learning this halachot of which one takes precedent and what and what and and so on and so forth. So if you have a a whole array of things in front of you, the Buda says in yesh benehem min shiva if you have from the seven um, species of er that the Israel has been pra praised by, then they take precedence. And, and them you say bracha first. What's, what's beloved to you, what you love, takes precedence. There's no difference if you have shivata minim versus um, apples and oranges doesn't make doesn't make any difference. Whatever you like, if you like apples more than um, grapes, you could say brachar apples first. That's what Chachamim said. So that's the Gemara. Tan Rabanan. We learned al davar she'en gidro min haaris kigon basar beima chayot wofod on things that are not from from ground like basar beimot the the flesh of of animals or chayot the, the domestical kosher animals or wild kosher animals. The ofod and, and birds with the fish, Omer, Shakon Yabid Baro. Ala Khalav Vala Betim on milk and eggs, Al Gvina cheese, Omer, Shakon Yabid Baro. Vala Pachi Psha on bread that has gone bad. Vala Yayin, Shay cream on wine that started going bad and, and turning into vinegar. Vala Hatafshil, Shay Avas Rato on a food that's going bad and, and uh, becoming spoiled. Omer shakol niyabit varo. Say shakol on that and those as well. Al melach v'al azamid on salt and on brine. V'al kemehinu pitriot. Different types of what we call mushrooms. Um, well, pitriot is a type of kemehin, just larger. Omer shakol niyabit varo. And then also you say shakol niyabit varo. It's actually very interesting. There are uh, there are those who wanted to suggest that. Um, Pitriot are the ones who grow under the ground, right? You have you have mushrooms under the ground as well. Uh, but but the, there was the Kloisenberger Rebbe, the Divrei Yatsiv, uh, wanted to suggest in a tshuva that this is potatoes, right? Potatoes, but uh, of course that's not that's not the mean how potatoes is hadama. But on uh, different types of uh, mushrooms, we say shakol yabitvaro. Make sure not to have the poison ones. Says the Gemara. How do you have, how do you have kemehinu pitriot and you call them shakol niyabit varo? Remember, you want to suggest that kemehinu pitriot love gidule karka? You, know, you want to suggest that kemehinu pitriot are, are not considered gidule karka? They, they grow on the ground. What do you mean? They, they grow on the ground. Umara says, no. Hatanya, hanoder mi perot ha'ares. If you make a nether that I'm not going to have any fruits of the earth, right? If you make a nether, I don't have any of the fruits of the earth. Asur be perot ares, you cannot have any fruits of the earth. Umutar be kemenu petriot. You could have mushrooms. So you see, mushrooms are not considered gidule ares. We mamar kol gidule karka, but if you said kol gidule karka, anything that comes out of the ground, then asur af be kemenu petriot. Then you said um, you said something that includes mushrooms as well. So Amar Abaya, Abaya answered this question. He said. Yes, they grow on the ground, but they don't sustain themselves from the ground. It's from the earth, whatever it is. It's not that they don't have roots in the ground. Their sustenance doesn't come from within the ground. It could be they could grow on, 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 a, piece, on a piece of rock as well, right? No roots in the ground. There's no sustenance from the ground. It could be on a rock. It could be on a wall. 
most of the time, most of the time they are on the ground. You see them on the ground, but they're not considered sustained from the ground. Unlike other things that have roots in the ground and they get minerals and so on and so forth with, from within the ground, this one is not minak yanki. They're not sucking their, their um, sustenance from the ground. And then Mara says, katani. But it says, davashen gidulo min ha'ares. Umar says, Tani changed the language of that and say, al davar she'en yonek min ha'ares. She'en yonek min ha'ares. If you say davash no yonek min aretz, then it doesn't include the kemeinu pitriot. But say gidu min aretz is different. But that Hashem will continue this with this. Okay. Okay.